Let's look at a nice problem that involves an infinite matrix product. And this is problem 11739 from the American Mathematical Monthly. And we'll use a fairly well-known fact from linear algebra here about diagonalization of a matrix. So let's recall that if we've got eigenvalues, lambda 1, lambda 2, up to lambda n, of an n by n matrix A, and their corresponding eigenvectors are v1, v2, up to vn, then p inverse times A times p is the diagonal matrix, where the diagonal entries are those eigenvalues. And you might say, well, what's this matrix P? Well, that's the diagonalization matrix, and it's given by this matrix V1, V2, V up to Vn, where by V1 here, I mean the first column is the eigenvector V1. And thus, the second column is the eigenvector V2, and so on and so forth. Okay, so let's look at our goal here we'd like to find the product over all primes of the matrices 1, 1 over p squared, 1 over p squared, and 1. So nice product of 2 by 2 matrices here. So, well, since we talked about diagonalization already, we'd probably like to diagonalize this matrix. So how do you diagonalize a matrix? Well, based off what we see here, we need to find the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors. So of course, we first need to find the eigenvalues of, well, this matrix here. So how do we do that? Well, we look at the characteristic polynomial. So the characteristic polynomial here, which I'll use a variable x, so that's going to be the determinant of x times the identity minus our matrix. So I'll just put our matrix here, 1, 1 over p squared, 1 over p squared, and 1. But of course, doing the little bit of arithmetic, that's going to give us the determinant of, well, we'll have x minus 1 here, minus 1 over p squared here, a minus 1 over p squared here, and another x minus 1 here. But of course, finding the determinant of a 2 by 2 matrix is fairly straightforward. So you're going to have the product of the diagonal entries. That'll give us x minus 1 quantity squared minus the product of the off-diagonal matrices. That's going to give us 1 over p to the fourth. But solving that, well, solving the equation where that's equal to 0, which is, of course, what we want to do, recall that the eigenvalues are roots of the characteristic polynomial. That means that we have x equal to, well, this is fairly straightforward. We get 1 plus minus 1 over p squared. Okay, so that means we've got two eigenvalues. So let's write them right here. We have maybe, I'll call them lambda plus and lambda minus. So lambda plus is 1 plus 1 over p squared and lambda minus is 1 minus 1 over p squared. Okay, well, let's go ahead and find the eigenvectors now, now that we're armed with knowledge of the eigenvalues. Okay, so let's maybe first find the eigenvector corresponding to lambda plus. So in order to do that, we need to look at the null space of well, it's going to be lambda plus times the identity matrix minus our matrix in question. This is the standard way to find the eigenvectors. And that's because that null space is exactly equal to the eigenspace with the appropriate eigenvalue. Okay, but now doing some quick arithmetic using the fact that lambda plus is 1 plus p squared, you'll see that what we're really aiming for is the null space of 1 over p squared minus 1 over p squared minus 1 over p squared and 1 over p squared. But observe that that matrix has, well, all of the entries are plus minus 1 over p squared, so we might as well factor out a 1 over p squared from all of the entries, but that will not change the null space. So this is in fact equal to the null space of the matrix 1, negative 1, negative 1, 1. And then let's recall that the null space, or in this case, well, we're finding the eigenspace. Recall that the null space here is the eigenspace of the 
eigenvalue lambda plus. This null space is invariant under doing row operations. So observe that if we add these two rows, we get a row of all zeros. We can put that in the second row. So this is the null space of one minus one, zero, zero. But now it's pretty easy to find a vector that's killed by this matrix. In other words, it's sent to zero. And well, how do we do that? Well, we'll just simply take this matrix, one, negative one, zero, zero, and multiply it into an arbitrary two vector, A, B, and get zero, zero. And observe, that's gonna give us a system of equations fairly quickly, A minus B equals zero. Well, it's really just a single equation. Observe that that means that A is equal to B. So as long as A is equal to B here, our vector is in the null space of this matrix one, negative one, zero, zero, and thus it's in the null space of our original matrix by our previous discussion, and thus it's in the eigenspace of lambda plus, thus it's an eigenvector of lambda plus. But we might as well choose a particular eigenvector, and we can do that by setting our free variable, which we could take equal to b here, uh, equal to something really, really easy, like perhaps the number one. So if we set b equal to one, we'll get our eigenvector corresponding to eigenvalue lambda plus, I'll call this v plus, and this will be equal to one, one. And then I guess I'll just say, similarly here, we can do the same kind of thing, and we get v minus, which is the eigenvector corresponding to eigenvalue lambda minus, and that will be one minus one. All right, so let's gather that information up at the top and then we'll move to the next step. Okay, so we just determined eigenvectors and eigenvalues of this matrix here that we're taking the product over all matrices in this family. And well, we've got eigenvectors v plus and v minus corresponding to eigenvalues lambda plus and lambda minus. And observe what this tells us is that if we set uh, maybe matrix Q equal to one, one, one minus one, notice that's the matrix formed where the first column is eigenvector V plus, the second column is eigenvector V minus, then we have Q inverse times our original matrix, one, one over P squared, one over P squared one times Q is equal to our diagonalized matrix, which will have lambda plus and lambda minus on the diagonals. In other words, one plus one over P squared, zero, zero, one minus one over P squared. Okay, so I think that's looking pretty good. But now what we can do is invert this equation right here that I'm underlining in blue. And by invert this, I mean, well, let's solve for the objects that we're really interested in taking the product of. So observe that we have one, one over P squared, one over P squared one is in fact equal to Q times our diagonal matrix, one plus one over P squared, zero, zero, one minus one over P squared times Q inverse. Okay, so I think that's pretty nice. But now let's start looking at our product now. So I'll just maybe write our product here is actually equal to a certain limit of a finite product. And I'm gonna write it like this. It's the limit as n goes to infinity of the product over all primes less than or equal to capital N of this right here. So of course, an infinite product is maybe carefully defined as a finite product, and this is how we'll do this. But we might as well not multiply over this product we might as well just multiply over its diagonalized version with the Q and the Q inverse on either side. So this is Q times the matrix one plus one over P squared, zero, zero, one minus one over P squared. And then we have a Q inverse. Okay, so now to get a handle on what's going on here, what I'm gonna do is write out a couple of terms. So let's recall that the first prime is gonna be two, so that's gonna give us Q, 
and then we'll have one plus one over two squared, zero, zero, one minus one over two squared times Q inverse. So that's the first term of this product. Then the second prime is three. So that's gonna give us Q, and then we'll have one plus one over three squared, zero, zero, one minus one over three squared times Q inverse. And then, well, the third prime is five. So that's gonna give us Q, and then, well, the matrix with a five in it, I'll just put like some dotted lines there, and then a Q inverse, and then so on and so forth. And the important thing to notice here is that we sandwich these Q inverse Qs on either side of every matrix. That means that, well, a Q inverse will always collide with a Q in the middle, and those will cancel just by the fact that when you multiply two, uh, inverse matrices or an inverse matrix pair, you get the identity matrix, which does not do anything in terms of multiplication. But, well, there's going to be a hanging Q over here on the extreme left-hand side. And in fact, there's going to be a hanging Q inverse over on the extreme right-hand side as well when we hit our largest prime that's less than N. And, well, we can factor that Q and that Q inverse out and that'll give us something like this. So over here on the left-hand side, we'll have a Q, and then we'll have this limit as capital N goes to infinity, the product over all primes less than or equal to N of our matrix. So we got one plus one over P squared, zero, zero, one minus one over P squared. And then we have a Q inverse on the other side of that. Okay, great. So now, I'm not gonna start the next board with this. I'm gonna start the next board with our product multiplied by Q on the left and Q inverse on the right. That means that on the other side of the equation, we'll simply have this limit. But in fact, well, we can just take the limit and it'll turn it back into an infinite product. Okay, so let's look at that. So here's where we are at the moment. Our goal product is now equal to this matrix one, 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 negative one, and then the product of all of these diagonal matrices, and then this matrix half, 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 negative half. Of course, this matrix over here on the left was our Q, and then that one over there is Q inverse. Recall that there's a fairly straightforward way to find the inverse of a two by two matrix. That's what we've used over there. Okay, so now where are we gonna go from here? Well, I'm gonna bring down part of this. So let's bring down this leading matrix. So one, 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 negative one. And then next up what we can do is since we're taking a product of diagonal matrices, we can in fact bring that product inside of the matrix just based off of the way that the product of diagonal matrices works. Okay, so let's do that. So here we have the product over all primes P. I'll just put a P there and then one plus one over P squared, and then we have zero, zero, and then again, the product over all primes P here, one minus one over P squared. And then I can bring this down as well. So half, 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 negative half, good. And now I think maybe in order to keep this as clean as possible, what I'll do is evaluate these two things that I'm putting in boxes on their own. So this peach boxed product and this blue boxed product. Okay, so let's bring this over here, this peach boxed product. We have the product over all primes P of one plus one over P squared. So the trick here is to rewrite this in kind of a crazy way. And it's gonna be like this. So this is gonna be the product over all primes of We've got one minus one over P to the fourth over one minus one over P squared. And now from here, we're gonna switch the numerator and the denominator by taking reciprocals. So it's gonna look something like this. We're gonna have the product over all primes of now in the numerator will be one over one minus one over P squared. And then in the denominator will be one over one minus one over P to the fourth. 
And I'm doing that so I can expand each of those as geometric series. So now what can I do? So I'll have my product over all primes. And then up here in the numerator will now be equal to 1 plus 1 over p squared plus 1 over p to the fourth plus 1 over p to the sixth dot dot dot. And then in the denominator, what I'll have is 1 plus 1 over p to the fourth plus 1 over p to the eighth plus 1 over p to the twelfth dot dot dot. But now, when you multiply out the numerator as well as the denominator, you'll end up with the reciprocal of every natural number squared. And, well, that's simply because of the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. So, just to write that out carefully, up in the numerator we'll have 1 plus 1 over 2 squared plus 1 over 3 squared plus 1 over 4 squared dot dot dot. And then in the denominator, we'll have 1 plus 1 over 2 to the 4th plus 1 over 3 to the 4th plus dot dot dot. And then I guess I didn't explicitly say how that's happening in the denominator, but it's for very similar to reasons to what's happening in the numerator. But now let's observe that that numerator and the denominator have well-known values. So the, the sum of the reciprocal of the squares is simply equal to pi squared over 6 and the sum of the reciprocal of the fourth powers is equal to pi to the fourth over 90. I've done a few videos on the channel with the numerator, that's known as the Basel problem, and I've done the denominator on the channel as well. But now, let's observe that this simplifies quite nicely to, let's see, it'll be the number 15 over pi squared. Okay, so well, that's going to be this top term right here. So let's maybe erase this and we'll go ahead and plug in here 15 over pi squared it should be. Good. And then, well, what's happening with the blue boxed equation? Well, in fact, the blue boxed equation is going to occur right here. But, in fact, it's going to be in the denominator, as we see that it being in the numerator here corresponded to it being in the denominator originally. So that means, instead of getting pi squared over 6, we'll have 6 over pi squared. Okay, so let's maybe erase this, and we can plug in the 6 over pi squared. And then, from here, all that's left to do is to multiply everything out. So let's do that. Okay, so after doing a lot of work, we got to this point. And now, from here, what I'm going to do is factor out as much as I can just to simplify the process. Observe that I can factor a pi squared out of the denominator. I can also factor a 2 out of the denominator by all of those 2's there. And then one more thing, I can factor a 3 out of the numerator because the GCD of 15 and 6 is 3. So that's going to give me 3 over 2 pi squared. And then left over will be 1, 1, 1, negative 1 times the matrix. Well, this is going to be a 5, right? Because here we're factoring a 3 out. And then 0, 0, 2. And then here we're going to have 1, 1, 1, negative 1. And now, well, let's do this just a little bit at a time. So if we take these two matrices and find their product, what will we get? Well, this is fairly straightforward. So that's going to be a 5 in this first entry. And then it's similarly going to be a 5 right here, and then a 2 right here, and a negative 2 right here. So bringing this down, we have 3 over 2 pi squared. We have our 1, 1, 1, negative 1. And then now we're going to have a 5, 5, 2, negative 2. Then bringing this 3 over 2 pi squared along for the ride. Now let's see, 1, 1 multiplying into 5, 2, that'll give us 5 plus 2, which is 7. And then here, 1 times 5, 1 times negative 2 added, that'll give us a 3. And then very similarly, we'll have a 3 right here and a 7 right there. And there you have it. The product over all of these matrices is 3 over 2 pi squared, and then the matrix... 7373. Seven, three.